even though your hair <laughs> airline <laughs> is clearly receding and you live <laughs> in your parents' basement? Who hurt you, man? 10 uninteresting British people talk politely about murder for about 250 pages. Okay, I'm not gonna read that part. Okay, if you have been on my channel before, you know that I'm not the one to shy away from giving a book a negative review, from pointing out its flaws, or sometimes even completely roasting a book, its characters, or an author for that matter. But how would I feel when given a taste of my own medicine? What would my reaction be to some of the most critical, nastiest, one-star reviews of my absolute favorite books of all time? This is what what we are going to find out today. I, in fact, will be reading and reacting to one-star reviews of my four and five-star reads, and this will hopefully be very chill and relaxing and light-hearted video. Please do not take anything I say super, super close to your heart. We all have different opinions about different books, and that's the beauty of it, I feel like. So yeah, let's get straight into the world of negative Goodreads reviews. So I'm going to start with one of my most recent reads, which is Kill For Me, Kill For You. I literally just finished this book and oh boy, what a wild ride this was. I literally could not put this book down. I was working and thinking about this book. I was editing and thinking about this book. I was literally counting minutes until I can grab my Kindle and get back to the story, okay? This book might have been the one to finally finally break my reading slump and for that I'm eternally grateful. But let's now look at one star reviews. So I must say there are not that many for this book. It currently has 4.21 rating, which is a total slay. But there are still a couple. I will try to read out those that are not hidden under spoilers. So... Here we go. This might be the worst book I have read this year. Well, it might be the best book I have read this year. Thank you very much. If Goodreads stars were eye rolls, <laughs> this would get five. Okay, that was good. I disagree, you know, but I admire your sharpness and your wittiness. Fun fact, as a non-native English speaker, I tend to find phrases and words that I like, hyperfixate on them and slowly incorporate them in my own speech, which is what I think I'm going to start doing with this phrase. If Goodreads stars were eye rolls, something something would get five. That's just too poetic. In the same review, they write, Also, more than once, the author made it a point to make fun of a political figure. I despise when authors get immature and petty in their writing. I read to escape this kind of bullshit. Not interested. Um, yeah, I can relate to that, though it did not bother me too, too much in this particular case. Overall, I also hate this kind of half-hearted commentary on current events. Either go full in or just skip it completely. No likable character characters, confusing timeline, overall depressing story with an unhappy ending. Well, last time I checked, this was marketed as a mystery thriller, not as a happily ever after. So as to confusing timeline, I feel like this was the whole point or rather one of the points that this book was trying to make. I don't know. DNF at 19%. Life's too short for thrillers with no thrill. Preach sister. So I truly think that had you gotten to around 25% of this book maybe, you probably wouldn't have DNF'd it. Cause that's when shit really hits the fan and the book like actually takes off. And as I said, to me, this was extremely addicting and unputdownable read. But honestly, anyone who's looking for a new great mystery thriller to read, I personally highly recommend Kill For Me, Kill For You. Okay, up next, I'm going to read reviews for My Dark Vanessa, one of my all-time favorite books, actually. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm scared, because this book honestly holds a truly special place in my heart, but... Let's see, I guess. If I could give this book zero stars, I would. I kept waiting for the main character to have some sort of epiphany. 
What does that mean? Oh, it's not a word. She probably meant epiphany, which is the word that my favorite English teacher, Taylor Swift, taught me actually. Some sort of epiphany. Even to have some likable quality? Nope. Worst book I have ever read. Okay, so I actually think that the author deliberately made Vanessa so unlikable to get her point across, if that makes sense. Like, the thing is, it should not matter whether Vanessa herself is a good or a likable character or not. Regardless of that, we should still treat her as a victim of her 45-year-old teacher who groomed and abused her. Do you know what I mean? I think, like, in fiction and in real life as well, it's easier for everyone to, like, root for likable people and good people and sympathize for them, I guess. This is the bias that we all have when the character of the victim shouldn't really matter. We should all be on Vanessa's side regardless. I hope I'm making sense with this. Mm, not impressed with this novel at all. If you like a story full of gaslighting, narcissism, melodramatic, delusional, and mentally ill characters, then this is a read for you. There isn't one character in this novel that I found believable or enjoyable, and the author even less so, who in my humble opinion was the biggest gaslighter of all. Complete waste of my time to read this. Um... Yeah, I don't even know what to say here. Yes, it is a story of gaslighting and narcissism and mental illness as well, I guess. But again, this was advertised as a story reminiscent of Lalita. I struggle to understand why this person was expecting an enjoyable story per se. Yeah, I don't know. I probably sound way too harsh, but... I just love this book, if you could not tell. I honestly don't know why I torture myself with this type of stories. I was on the struggle bus with this one. The only part I liked was when she got a dog. <laughs> okay, random, but as a fellow dog-obsessed person, I fully respect your take. I'm not really sure how I feel about this book. I found it an uncomfortable read as it romanticized childhood sexual abuse and grooming? No, 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 I don't think it does. You see, I don't really think that it romanticizes childhood abuse and grooming to any extent, actually. And I just cannot get on board with the statement. It sounds exactly as those people who claim that Nabokov intended Lalita to be a love story. Absolutely not. Okay, I feel like we got way too serious there for a second. Let's actually lighten the mood and read some reviews for Carrie Soda is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I love this book, but I already know what people are gonna say, so let's see if my expectations are correct or not. Genuine question. Who cares? I do. I do, okay? Have some respect here. I don't give a fuck about tennis. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, this is a long one. When your reader is rooting against the protagonist instead of rooting for her, you'd know you're doing something wrong. Look, I get the appeal of cocky, arrogant characters, but at least make them likable. Yes, this may come as a shock to Taylor Jenkins Reid, but a cocky, strong, powerful woman can be likable at the same time. Also, why does Taylor Jenkins Reid's version of powerful woman means she's stomping down every other woman? Carrie Soto literally came out of retirement just to prevent another female player her chance to shine like that's the opposite of feminism ah uh, come on <laughs> man she's a professional athlete who is also a record breaker and her whole life and personality is about being competitive and winning and it's not about stomping down other women specifically she just happens to compete against other women and also nobody ever says shit like that about men do you know what i mean they are for some reason allowed to fight for championships and play a dirty game but god forbid a women show some tip. DNF at 32%. I absolutely adore Taylor Jenkins Street 
and I have and will read everything she writes. But this I just can't finish. It's very well written as per the usual of this author, but there were a few things that just did not work for me. Harry's father repeatedly speaks Spanish at length. Taylor Jenkins Reid makes no attempt to offer any translation or explain what was said. Readers who aren't fluent will be left clueless. Did I miss something important? Did Taylor Jenkins Reid insert a hidden gem? I'll never know. Um, yeah, that's kind of annoying. At least offer some sort of translation at the bottom of the page for those people who don't speak Spanish. But I'm just gonna go ahead and say that from what I remember, you did not actually miss anything important. I think it was like random cariño here and there and nothing actually of substance. Also, this book is about tennis. Not tennis, but all caps. Tennis. There is no drama, no mystery, no plot. There is just the history of a tennis career. So unless you really love tennis, you're going to get really bored really fast. Okay, yes, this book is about tennis, but the thing is, I personally think that it's not only about tennis. I personally felt like the story of Carrie's life was told through tennis and her personality was showcased to us. Using tennis matches as a tool, I know that's an unpopular opinion, but that is just how I feel. And I'm also not any sort of tennis fan, but I love this book nevertheless. So do not let that stop you from picking this book up, my friends. It's one of Taylor Jenkins Reid's best work to date. Okay, guys, I feel like we have to also look at reviews of Happy Place, which is my my absolute favorite novel of Emily Henry. I love this book. My soul is literally buried in it. But I do also know that this one happens to be Emily Henry's most polarizing book. People either adore it like I do or absolutely hate it. It seems like there's no in between. Not my happy place. Okay. No offense, but are you guys lying? We are not. You just do not get it, okay? And honestly, good for you, okay? Good for you. It took me four days to read this and respectfully they were the most painful four days of my life. God, I just love nasty skating reviews, even if those happen to be for my favorite books of all time. I had to force myself to finish this book. It was boring. This felt like middle school drama, a lot of miscommunication between a couple and among friends. I was drained at the end. I couldn't even enjoy the happy parts. I was so tired and annoyed with everyone. Yeah, you see, if you don't like miscommunication trope, you probably won't like this book because it's literally built on one huge miscommunication. I, however, happen to enjoy this trope, particularly if it is executed well, which I think it was in this case. This book was awful, almost 400 pages of straight miscommunication. Yep, there it is again. Are you really trying to tell me that Harriet and Wynne, who are 30 years old and were together for 10 years, can't communicate about their mental health? Are you kidding me? Even the friends can't communicate. Again, they've been friends for 10 years and can't be straight up. My best friends who are all men <laughs> can communicate better than these three women? I mean, I have my doubts about that, but okay. All of these people need therapy. Yes, they do, and so do I. Okay, one more. This should be called Ninth Circle of Hell. Horrible friends who see their friend is suffering and decide to throw salt in the wound. Meanwhile, the man who the author wants you to swoon over gives small pee-pee energy because his girlfriend has a successful career and he just wants to go live in his small town. However, doesn't even communicate this with her and cold turkey dumps her. Doesn't try to work through it as a partnership. She leaves behind her whole world to win him back when he should have been the one groveling. Her friends are all terrible for making her be in the same room as this guy, knowing she's putting on a brave face for them. Trash all around, worst Henry book. You see, you are not that far off. And you know what? Sometimes bad reviews do be making correct points about the books I love. I have no other choice than to pretend I never read it and move on with my life. Yeah, let's do exactly that. You know what? Let's look at the reviews for The Hunger Games. And most of them are pretty old, which makes sense because the book itself was released in 2008. But the whole saga recently had a major resurgence and I finally read it as well last year. I thought it was 
excellent to be honest. I only regret that it took me that long to get into it. Okay, immediately one review says far too unrealistic. Okay, that did not age well. I found it impossible to accept this world. It wasn't because it was a nasty place, but because it wasn't believable. The capital puts on this Hunger Games and sacrifices countless children in the process? I mean, what? Children? Why would the capital do this? I was in charge of the capital. I would have developed a much more effective system. I'd have fixed the game so the leaders of each district were sacrificed each year. That way there would be no one left to lead an uprising against the capital. And those left in the districts wouldn't have the courage or reason to lead an uprising. They would want to keep their heads down because they would be sacrificed next if they too led a rebellion. Problem solved. Capital rules the districts in oppressive peace. Okay, evil mastermind. Don't go around giving them ideas. Despite the huge cult following of this book, I detested it. I wish I could have given it zero stars. Who wants to read about kids getting mauled and killing each other for absolutely no reason on live television? You would be surprised, man. Not to mention I hate stories told in present tense. I don't know why, I just like past tense. Okay, talk about constructive criticism. I have not read the rest of the series and I have absolutely no desire or intention to, whatsoever. To be completely honest with you, I didn't even get through the first chapter. I didn't want to read it in the first place and I'm glad I didn't. Apparently it's much more of a romance than I thought, I roll. What? So let me get this straight, you didn't even finish the first chapter? You felt emboldened enough to write this negative review? Um, to be honest, I use Suzanne Collins' ex, her high school bully, her mortal enemy, because this damn sure feels personal. Okay, one more review. What the fuck is this shit? The latest pop culture item? If not Twilight or Harry Potter, it's prepubescent shit like this that grown adults are reading. They're reading the same shit as their shitty teenager. If one more friend or family member suggests this as a good read, I swear I will punch them in the mouth. Um... Okay. It is mind-blowing that this book has a higher rating than any Aldo Huxley, any George Orwell, or any great book for that matter on the shit side. Ah uh, yeah, replace that with literally any book written by a man. This is exactly why the world sucks and nothing will change. I don't even need to read it, I just hate it, because it exists and everyone loves it. How can it possibly be that good? How can so many people agree? Okay, I'm not gonna read that part. God forbid you would read something not jammed down your throat. You are the same 35-year-old teenagers that love Twilight and still go to punk shows even though your hair <laughs> hairline <laughs> is clearly receding and you live in your parents' basement? Who hurt you, man? I hate you and your cursed ilk. You people are boring and predictable. Read a piece of literature, for God's sake. When did everything get so fucking easy? When did everyone just lay down and get force-fed shit? Has it always been this way? Time will reveal that this is all bullshit and you should all have shame on yourself. Well, actually, time only revealed that this is a very profound, very insightful, very of the time book. A future classic, if I do say so myself. So now you kind of look like a fool, my friend. Okay, I'm about to get my heart broken because we are about to read one star reviews for Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. One of my absolute favorite reads of this year, okay? Literally my perfect romance book. Okay, I'm bracing myself. Everybody needed therapy. Yeah, that's a common thread with the books I like, I'm afraid. I like characters who need therapy. I like trauma. Give me more of that, actually. A lobotomy in a book form. <sighs> you do not need to be that mean, my friend. DNF 30%. Insta-love, bland storyline, and no romance. What the same woman wrote yours truly, I will never know. You know what? I actually think that this book is much, much better than yours truly, even though, don't get me wrong, I absolutely adore yours truly as well. But this book, 
I don't know, it just has something else about it. Sorry, I'm not a fan. Have you not seen Dateline? Also, moving to Minnesota over Hawaii? Come on, sister. And for a man you have never met? I just can't, period. I mean, they would eventually go to Hawaii. If I remember correctly, they just postponed it for three months, half a year something along those lines in my opinion this book is marketed so wrongly the cover and blip make it sound like this is a fun rom-com but it is indeed more of a trauma dump book about family and mental health issues with the romance between the two protagonists serving as a backdrop if that's how it was marketed to readers that would be one thing but instead you expect a love story and end up reading about really triggering family dynamics and human tragedies please stop lying to readers and promote these books in a responsible way as what they are and don't make them seem like light-hearted rom-coms you see i feel like this is a very well constructed review that actually brings up valid points and i agree with this person we should maybe stop putting those extremely heartbreaking stories under colorful and cutesy covers i've said it before and i'll say it again i'm trying very hard not to be mean about books but books like this make it impossible Okay, so with that in mind, if you are Abby Jimenez, please avert your gaze because I'm about to be a real bitch. Let's see. Firstly, this book is simultaneously boring, stressful, and completely exhausting. The main duo are frankly pretty odious, and I simply did not care about them. The romance centers around unlikable moron Emma and Justin, who is the most cringe man I have read in a long time. They have no chemistry whatsoever, and the book is largely a trauma dump about the shit show that is their lives. Paired with Justin doing cute, read, ick, things uh i mean if justin is icky and cringy then give me all the cringe just give it to me i'll take it okay let's do one more book let's wrap it up on some classic and then they were none by agatha christie well i know this book has some problematic aspects in it but i mean you have to think about when it was written for me it's a huge part of my childhood it's one of those books that made me a reader so what can i say I love this book. Because this was written a while ago, the writing style is a bit different and it just wasn't my cup of tea. Fair enough. Although I must say, I feel like Agatha Christie has a very approachable writing and language, especially compared to a lot of classic literature out there. One little soldier boy out of five. Ten uninteresting British people talk politely about murder for about 250 pages. <laughs> Yes, and that is what I'm here for. Give me more of that. I was supposed to care when people started dying, right? Well, I didn't. Quite frankly, every single character in this book is extremely dull and not surprisingly, the book overall is a snooze fest. Wow. <laughs> I did not care who was murdering them. Clearly, they were being killed for issues in their past that the murderer feels angered by. How dare you cause death? I shall kill you in return. Makes sense, sure. In the very beginning, I was intrigued by Soldier Island, but when everyone comes together, it is glaringly clear that they are all a bore and the book was not going to improve. Overall, I felt like I was reading the game Clue. This may make a decent movie. One may exist. I don't know. It does exist. Although, if I would even sit through that, two hours is questionable. I cared so little I never bothered to check. I doubt I will be reading another Agatha Christie novel as this is touted as one of her better ones and I was bored to tears. I mean yeah I would say if you did not like this one chances of you liking any of her other novels are close to zero because I genuinely believe that it is actually her best novel and I genuinely think that it is quite the opposite of a snooze fest. It's actually very fast paced, it's clever, it's intriguing and atmospheric and creepy. Anyways, we are not here to listen to me gush about my favorite books, so let's wrap it up. Okay, this was fun, wasn't it? I certainly did not expect to enjoy reading scathing reviews of my absolute favorite books 
this much yeah let me know if you like this kind of a video and do you read negative reviews of your favorite books can they sway your opinion and actually affect your ratings or you just pretend that they do not exist that is it from me for today thank you very much for watching till the very end and if you feel like it please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to never miss an upload for me stay safe and i'll see you in my next one bye